There is one week left in the month of August, which means there is one week left in Vlogist. It's crazy to think how quickly it's just flown by. Thank you to everyone who has watched the video so far and for those of you who have left feedback. It's been really cool to get to meet some of you via online or some of you in real life. I definitely plan on bringing much more content to the channel after August is over. And I'll get into that in another video because this is not a channel update video. Today we're talking about anamorphic lens flares. Yesterday I released a video that was shot entirely on my iPhone 8 Plus. I'll link it here if you haven't seen it yet. And in that video I dropped a couple of lens flares into some specific scenes and I've had some folks ask me how I was able to achieve that with just an iPhone. Now while there are ways to achieve those flares in camera with peripherals or with certain lenses, I was able to achieve that look in post. If you check the description below, I've linked a couple of lens flares that I've created that you can download for free and follow along as I show you exactly how I did it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is import the footage that you want to drop the lens flare on top of. In my case, I have some footage of a lamp, which was used on the intro, and also import one of the lens flares. I'm using lens flare one. Super complicated. Drop the footage onto your timeline and take the lens flare and drop it directly on top. Now you'll notice that the lens flare is much larger than the 1920 by 1080 format. I did that on purpose so we could animate it left and right without hitting the edge of the lens flare. The background is set to black, so to get rid of that, all we have to do is set the blending mode from normal to screen. And almost right off the bat, we have a pretty compelling look. To make it a little more convincing, we're going to animate the position and the opacity to match the footage. So I'll drag the lens flare out to the length of the clip. And all I'm doing now is just taking note of the position of the light source, and I'm going to animate it accordingly. So now with the lens flare layer active, I will click on the little stopwatch next to position, and then begin to scrub through my footage to figure out where I want to animate the lens flare. So it looks like it kind of moves up and to the left and kind of bobs around. You don't need to match it exactly. So what I'll do is find a point right about here, and I will move my lens flare to the left slightly and up slightly. Now because it dropped that keyframe in, it's going to move along with it. All we're doing is just creating a little bit of movement with that flare to give it that feel that it's done in camera. So from here it starts to move down, and I zoom out a little bit. So I will drop another keyframe here by changing the position. I'll move it down slightly and move it to the right slightly. And then as it moves off camera, I will move it back up just a little bit more. And then I will move that keyframe to the end. So now that I've keyframed the position of the lens flare, the next thing I want to do is keyframe the opacity to give it that realistic look. So we scrub back to the beginning of our footage, we toggle the animation for opacity, and right now it's set to 100%. I want it to start at about 40%. As we scrub to the right, I'll take that from 40 to about 70. Now you can play with these numbers, these aren't exact. And once it continues to move away, I'll drop it back down to about 20. And maybe one last bright pop to about 65. And then as it starts to go off the screen to about there, I'll go down to zero. So if I play through that, So there you have it. That's exactly how I was able to pull off that look and take iPhone footage and apply lens flares directly on top of it. If you have any questions or you run into any issues, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to them. And I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow.